as with all my videos, there is a lot of important information in the video description and in the pinned comment. Uh, there's phone numbers, emails, all that sort of thing. There's also links to anything that we're going to be talking about in this video, including the filter. Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter. And in this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at another hang on the back filter. This time from Superfish. And this particular model is the Superfish Hang On Filter 200. And you can probably guess from the name that this particular filter is recommended by the manufacturer for tanks up to 200 litres or 52 US gallons. So that's our filter there. Let's set up how it would be from the manufacturer with everything that comes with it. So we've got an intake pipe here, which is adjustable goes down a little bit further than it's set there. That's not the easiest to do with one hand, but there you go. So you've got quite a long inlet pipe. Normally you would put a lump of foam or something over that, like coarse foam, just to stop any small fish going in there and also to give you a bit of initial filtration to stop the main part of the filter clogging up with so much muck. Then as this pipe comes up, we've got a T-piece here and that has a floating intake to act as a skimmer so it draws water from the top and also from halfway down your tank that all seems good but it's got something on the back of here which I think may be a bit of a problem hopefully you'll be able to see there there's actually slits in the back of this um, T-piece so it will draw water in here all the time, which will reduce how much it draws in here. That to me seems very strange and you can't block that off. It's a bit of a bummer. Well, I say you can't block it off. You can block it off because that's what I've done. I mean, you, you could seal it with silicon, you could put a bit of tape over it or something, but I can't understand why it just doesn't have like a little slidey thing there to, to cap that off. Well, actually, I can't even understand why it's there in the first place, if I'm being brutally honest. Moving further up the pipe, we've got a little tap here, which controls how much water the pump can draw in, and therefore how much water will ultimately come out of the filter. So the water goes up, along there. That's your pump, which is 450 litres per hour, or 118 US gallons per hour. Not very big, but it doesn't really have to be. Um, it's not pumping water up to any great height like it would from a canister filter. So it doesn't really need to be overpowered. And then from there, the water feeds up inside the filter to an elbow joint, and it goes through these three cartridges. Now the 100 version of this filter comes with two cartridges, which makes me think that the 200 should actually come with four cartridges if it's meant to do twice as much but it doesn't it comes with three and I'll pull this apart and show you what's in those cartridges now oh, but before I do I'll just show you this there's these little plastic button things that you push into the bottom and they get a really good tight fit and they just allow you to set the distance between here and your tank so that this sits perfectly up and down when it actually hangs on the back of the tank. This plastic is very similar to Tupperware sort of plastic like you'd get in uh, like bait boxes and so on which is fine because it, it allows for a little bit of movement it's not brittle it's actually pretty well made and the top is more or less just like a Tupperware sort of box top as well that just slots on the top and we'll need that off to take a look inside that's it Okay, so the idea is that these cartridges would just be replaced every so often because they've got carbon in. And although they're sealed, you can actually get into them to put your own stuff in, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. So that's the main filtering part. As you can see, it's pretty narrow. I think it's only about seven centimeters or just under three inches. So that's very slim line. That's going to allow you to get your tank right up well, almost right up to the wall instead of keeping it way off like you would have to do with some hang on the back filters. Now the idea behind these is that each one of these acts independently but together. So the water gets pumped in here. Uh, it's going to be easier to see when I pull it apart but it goes through the top bit 
but it also goes through a coarse foam which is in the middle of this of each particular section and then on the outsides you've got a fine pad so it, it bleeds out into the filter from the inside out and the coarse pad inside of here is a carbon impregnated pad and the carbon will stay active for seven or eight weeks so really if you want to keep on top of the filter you've got to replace these every two months which you know given the cost of them will get expensive eventually so we're going to try and rectify that with what we're going to do but first of all i'm going to take one of these off and there's little clips all the way around here which are a bit awkward to get off but i'll take this plate off and i'll show you exactly what's in here the more times you take this plate off the easier it will be to take it off so what i'm going to propose later will get a lot easier really you need something pretty solid like a knife or a pair of scissors and you just gently have a go at these n3 here really you just gently prise this off that's it that's it right and once you get like the end three clips undone it becomes very easy to get the rest <laughs> says he right that's it off and obviously that can go on and off as many times as you want so you, what I'm saying is you don't need to buy these full replacement things if you don't want to you can put your own stuff in here but unfortunately because the water kind of flows through this cavity it does go through all of the things together so it's not as if you can put like a coarse pad in one a medium pad in the other then filter media in the other one it cannot really work like that which is a bit of a bummer so we'll just lift this out and that's basically what we've got it's almost like a I don't know it's like some ice cream sandwich or something but we've got fine pad on top and bottom and the carbon impregnated pad in the middle that's what the water hits first then it bleeds out through the fine pad and by the time it gets back to the tank the water should be really really clean but there's not much in here for anything biological so what i'm going to do i'm going to take all the factory installed stuff out of here to leave me with an empty tray and you may if you know if you're following along with this at home you may as well keep these because you never know when you might want to add a fine pad so you get a bacterial bloom or something you want to catch it or you get some very fine muck it's useful to keep if you ever need it and with regard to the carbon you may as well keep that as well you know what i'm going to do in here in a minute can easily be swapped out and put this stuff back in and if you get a new piece of bogwood and you get staining in the water by all means just swap out what i'm going to put in here for the carbon pad and that should draw in the color from the bogwood or any residual treatments after treating fish i think that was the one i pulled apart yesterday that one was much easier now we've got three empty compartments and what you're probably thinking is that i'm going to fill this with filter media and put it back inside the filter but I'm not there is a possibly better or certainly alternative place to put these which I'll explain in a moment what we're going to put in here is just coarse pads now these are the ones that I've got on the website they've got the bumpy bits on the outside and if we wanted them in a restricted space we'd put them bumpy to bumpy and squash them in but there is enough room to put them back to back and put them in that way so that gives you the maximum contact surface area on the outer sides and you'll be thinking well, why is it on the outer sides because this bleeds from the inside out but it doesn't have to and i think i forgot to thank the lad who sent me this and this confused me greatly because the previous video I did, the guy that sent it to me was called Ross, 
and this fella is actually called Ross as well but they're different Rosses so thank you very much Ross for sending me this okay so we have our empty filter and instead of the normal intake on here we're going to attach this like that and you can move these around so you can draw from different places in the tank but that is now our intake and as I mentioned at the very start normally on the intake you would put a block of coarse foam but what I've done here is fill all of these with coarse foam so this is going to catch pretty much all the muck that's going to be drawn out of your tank and instead of it ending up in here in the filter where it's going to clog things up and you know require this thing to be emptied out and cleaned all you're gonna to have to do is just pull that off strip these down clean them put them back together and whack that back on the bottom and the doubly beautiful thing about this system is if you didn't want all those foams in your tank Take those ones off, whack those back on. So now you've got two coarse pads to catch your muck. You could set this one up with your chalk ice type scenario with the carbon pad and the fine pads and bang that one in there to catch all the fine muck and do your chemical filtration. And that would leave you approximately half of the filter to put biological media in. That's pretty much got everything you need if you wanted to set it up like that. So that's another option with this filter. The only thing is though, if you're using one of these, you would probably have to block off that end because the water would just shoot straight out of it. So you block that end off and the water would be forced to go through your foams and out of each side of this. Right, so that's our intake and possible chemical extension sorted, if we chose to sacrifice one of those. For maximum biological filtration, we would go with those on the intake. And again, we've got a couple of options for inside of here with regard to filter media. These are 300 gram bags of bio gravel. Bio gravel, which is made from the same stuff as the Bio Home Ultimate and other forms of Bio Home. It's basically an exceptionally porous gravel made from sand and um, powdered glass and put in a kiln. and uh, It just creates a perfect environment. I mean, each one of these is just like a mini uh, deep sand bed, but it's like a deep sand bed in a totally safe environment you get aerobic and anaerobic activity in these types of media, in the biohome media. Because of the limited space, I kind of put uh, really bigger forms of media in here. The bio gravel does fit in pretty well in these bags though. So that is about 900 grams or roughly two pounds of media inside of here, which for something of this size is pretty impressive. Uh, and the surface area in there because of the media we've used will be off the scale. So water will be cleaned before it gets in here. Uh, apart from what is taken off the top, obviously. So what I would suggest with any sort of skimmer attachment is that for five or ten minutes, when you feed the fish, you just turn the pump off. That will allow all the food to get eaten and not just drawn straight into the skimmer and put into the filter because that would kind of negate what we're trying to do by cleaning the water before it gets to the biological media. So that's about 900 grams of media in here or approximately two pounds. Making this filter suitable for a tank of around about, well, up to 100 litres or 26 US gallons, if it's normally stocked, 
or half that if it's heavily stocked. Now, if you did choose to use one of these cartridges in here for your chemical filtration, you could simply take that first bag out and you'd still be left with about 600 grams of the bio media. Still quite a lot of media and certainly a hell of a lot more than what comes with it because there's really very little there to cater for for biological action for your bacteria, you know. You'll get more bacteria living in one bag of this than you will in the entirety of the rest of the filter and your tank. It really does hold a lot of uh, bacteria. So we'll take those out and I'll show you another option. Instead of using three separate little bags of media, you could use one big one. This is one of the, the larger bags. Um, I sell these on the website. Normally they'd have a kilo in. I had to take a little bit out to get it to fit in here. And there's just over 900 grams again in here. That fits in there pretty well. It really packed it out. And the beauty of that is it sits a little bit lower than those three separate bags. So you could go with a bit of medium pad over the top. In fact, if we turn that little rubbery fitting around on the inside, oh, where are we? Yes, that's it. Like so, it'll fire the water around this open area, through the media, up through the foam and back out. Some of the water will go on top of here. So any of the, the solids that float, i.e. what would normally get caught in the skimmer, would end up in that pad. Again, that would keep your media pretty clean as well. Want to clean the foam, just whip that out, clean it, stick it back. You want to clean the media, you just wait until you drain some water off during a normal water change and you just give that a bit of a shake in the bucket of tank water. That'll get any muck off and then just slap it straight back in here. Yeah, so there you go. That's turned something which long term would cost a fortune to maintain into something that initially, you know, may cost, well, I don't know, what are those bags, 16, 17 quid or something? And a little bit of foam doesn't cost much to upgrade, but it'll save you fortunes in the long run and it offers you so much more filtration than how it comes from the manufacturer uh, sorry superfish uh, it's uh, to be fair it isn't just superfish that do these uh, you know replaceable cartridges and all that it seems to be something that every aquatic manufacturer does they'll sell a filter cheap and in this case i think this one's around about 25 english pounds They'll sell the filter cheap, but they'll make the money month after month after month when you come back for these cartridges. I've kind of um, stopped that revenue stream, so again, I do apologise. But my commitment is to the actual person who's keeping the fish, not the people selling the filters. <laughs> so that offers you a great filtration for a tank of around about 100 litres, if normally stocked, or 26 US gallons. Because of the relatively limited flow rate from this hang on the back, it would be good for the likes of a guppy tank. You know, things that don't like a lot of water movement or a lot of surface agitation. Or if you had things like butterfly fish, a discus tank, a quarantine tank where the fish don't want to be thrown around all over the place. Actually, a quarantine tank would be a cracking place for it because it wouldn't take up much room. It would offer you incredible filtration and it wouldn't disturb the fish. Thanks again to Ross for sending me this. <laughs> I mean, it looks a little bit Frankenstein, but it's gonna do a hell of a job. Uh, I'm very glad to have taken a look at this because I wasn't even aware of this one and the fact that all these bits fit together is really, really good. Uh, just a note on the little slits at the back of this T-piece. Uh, I think I mentioned at the start, but if not, you could just fill those with a bit of aquarium silicon, put a bit of tape over there, and then it would ensure that all the water would be dragged in either through your foams or through your skimmer. All in all, a good, cheap, and 
pretty high capacity filter once it gets upgraded. I've used the bio gravel. Obviously you're free to just use whatever you want. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Yeah, it's definitely not the end of the world to take these off and it does get easier.